Hello, welcome back to Let's Build. This week we're building a boat, but before we get to that, I wanted to give you guys a top-down look of the kingdom so far. Now it's really messy, from years of versions of Minecraft and chunk errors, but I've pasted the Tangled Tower next to Lonely Mountain, and here you can see me incorporating it into the build. I was pretty lucky that the main tower itself wasn't corrupted, but you can see me here using giant stone spheres to start creating some artificial cliffs to surround it. Once those were down, the most painful part was yet to come. I'm gonna surround the entire map with this same kind of artificial cliff. Now it sucks and it's gonna take a long, long time, but it is really important. What these cliffs are gonna do is give us a solid border for the kingdom map. And when we have that border, we can focus on finishing everything that's inside it, which gives us a clear finish line and it's super cool. So the cliffs were actually kind of easy to do. After the first foundation of stone spheres, we painted spheres of concrete powder on top of it. And I used colors that made sense, so gray for the stone. Then we used some cylinders to make layers of brown concrete powder, and they're gonna just fall on top with gravity, and that's gonna be the dirt. And then we do the same thing with a layer of grass or green concrete powder. And then once that area was complete and the whole kingdom was surrounded, I could replace those concrete blocks with stone, dirt, and grass. It still looks a bit messy. You can see the clear line of where the cliffs are, but there's a bit of brown here and there where the grass hasn't quite spread yet. And here's a look at what the finished cliffs kind of look like, the ones that surround the Tangled Tower. Okay, so it's boat time, and back to the builder's shack to take a look at some boats. So I gathered a lot of pictures of boats here, and, and from all kinds of sources as well. There's real boats, boats from games, I think this one is from Sea of Thieves. I also looked at some Assassin's Creed boats. And also boats from movies, like Pirates of the Caribbean, a great example. But I wasn't keen on the tattered sail look for the Kingdom Navy. After looking at those ships though, I didn't really find what I wanted to copy. And so instead I just filled my brain with ideas of what makes a ship work and how they generally look and feel. So let's get to it. I made a small dirt platform as a foundation to start putting blocks on, and then I began to create the framework of the hull out of some dark oak logs. So the boat at the moment sits out of the water. We're gonna actually lower the completed boat once we're finished but it does make me realize that there's a few pretty good reasons why people make boats on land first before they sink them into the drink. So Minecraft loves straight lines and it hates curves. Curves are notoriously difficult in Minecraft. Everybody knows that. Getting them to look like they belong is really, really super tricky. So I was constantly going back and forth with this build, trying to get things looking natural. And I had to use all kinds of different woods and techniques to achieve that. And even then, I'm not even entirely sure I did. Because the build has so many curves and it's not really, it's gonna be very difficult to get a symmetrical boat if we do it by hand. So we're only gonna build the left side of the boat at the start, or, or should I say port, the port side, starboard? I don't know which is which. If you know which is port and which is starboard, let me know in the comments. But anyway, once the left side is built, we'll flip it over and paste it onto the other side to have our completed hull. So 
So in terms of style, I'm going to stick with the general feel of Peculiar's Revenge, the smaller boat that we already have on the coast. So that means we have a raised section at the back, and then the front is kind of going to come to a point and slowly curve up. Kind of like a banana. But not a banana boat. That'd just be weird. So our boat doesn't have engines, it uses wind. Nature's great engine. But the big question is how many sails do we need for a boat this size? It's, a, it's an important question, a tough question. Too many sails and it just looks like a ridiculous mess of cloth. But not enough and, and the boat just doesn't pop, doesn't stand out, doesn't, doesn't look impressive. So after some consideration, I settled on about three flat sails. One of them's going to be a double sail though, with like a smaller sail on the bottom and then a bigger sail on top, so like two sails for one mast. But yeah, we're going to have three flat sails and then one kind of triangle, horizontal kind of sideways sail on the front, because I think those look pretty cool. But now we know how many sails, uh, we get onto the real hard part, which is actually building the sails themselves. So getting sails right is, is a bit of a nightmare. You have no real frame of reference. If you look at Peculiar's Revenge, it's just small, it's, it's flat. You don't really need to worry about depth with the sails. But when you build a big boat, you don't have the luxury of being able to just put in flat sails. You can try, but it will look really bad. So it took me a long time to get them right, but every sail is different in size, so there's no cheating in terms of copying and pasting either. Although in future, if I built more boats, there's potential room for that, but at the moment, we've got to make all these sails by hand. And as you can see, these sails reach out really far from the mast. The biggest sail here actually reaches five blocks out from the mast. That's really thick. So when it comes to the design of the sails, we're going to stick with the same style as the other boats. So it's going to be a white sail with a red Templar cross. But the white wool in this texture pack has wooden borders that look kind of rubbish. So instead of white wool, we've used white concrete here. Okay, so with the sails done, it's time to move on to what every good ship needs. That's right, cannons. It's not a boat if it hasn't got cannons. Well, well, that's not entirely true, but this ship needs cannons. So I've made a few cannons around the deck. It took me a while to get the design just right but I've gone with iron blocks uh, that have dispenser tips. I think the faces look kind of cool, and there's also potential for functionality there too, since a dispenser can shoot stuff. And yeah, this boat has a lot of guns. Not as many as the Mary Rose, but we don't want this bad boy to sink.
So the crow's nest is pretty important too. This one's just wooden stairs. However, for the fences, for the sides of the crow's nest, I used trapdoors, and I think they look really good. I also wanted to add smaller triangle flags on top of the masts, because you see that on most ships of this era. However, getting this flag, again, because you're working with cloth, it's quite tricky to get it just right. Also, another important thing to remember is uh, when you're building a ship, you've got to think, where is the wind coming from? I guess we kind of didn't do that because the flag is going backwards while the sails are pushing from the wind forwards. And there we go. As we swoop into the bay, the ship is looking really big, really intimidating, and it's really meaty as well. I'm, I'm actually really happy with how this ship turned out. Also, builds like this really help me imagine the story of the world that we're building. And when you imagine a story around a world, it can help give you some really good ideas for future builds. For example, what if the evil fortress has a navy of its own, with evil-looking wicked ship designs? But as night falls, it's time to bring this episode to an end. So hit like, bash subscribe, and take care.